Welcome to Electron Line, and here's our next example of how to find, or at least in this case, approximate the area need to curve. We know that we can find the exact area by finding the integral, but this approximation again shows you how the integral is conceived. And initially, the concept of the integral is really conceived by this particular process. Here we have a curve, y is equal to f of x, and let's say that that curve is equal to x squared plus 2. It's the same curve that we had on the previous example, but we're going to solve this differently. Here, the height of the rectangle is going to be found by drawing a line at the middle of the rectangle to the top, like here, this is, would be in the middle, and then coming across over here, and now let's call that y sub 1. That would be the height of the first rectangle not the height determined by the line on the right side of the rectangle. Notice when we do that and we draw a line across, we have some additional area on the left, on the left side, but we have less area on the right side. That means that those two kind of average out, and so the excess area, or maybe slightly less than the area required to find the total area, will be very, very small. So the delta between the approximate area and the actual area will be much smaller with this particular technique. Again, for the second rectangle, we find the height by going down the middle where we hit the curve. This will be the y2, that will be the height of the second rectangle. Notice that, again, we'll have some excess area on the left, but not quite enough area on the right side of the rectangle. We do that again with the third rectangle, like this. This will be the height of the third rectangle, y sub 3. Again, when we draw the rectangle, notice that we have some excess over here, but some lacking over there. And finally, find the height of the fourth rectangle. We come up here. This will be the height of the fourth rectangle, y sub 4. When we draw the rectangle like this, notice we have some excess here, but a little bit lacking there. And they should almost cancel one another out. Again, if we call this a sub 1, call this a sub 2, call this a sub 3, and a sub 4, so this would be the first rectangle, like this, this would be the second rectangle, the third rectangle, and the fourth rectangle. We can then say that the total area is simply the sum of a1 plus a2 plus a3 and plus a4. The width of each rectangle, let's call it delta x again, so this here is the width, let's call it delta x. And there again, that would be the width is delta x. And since the total width here is 4 and there's 4 rectangles, we can say that delta x is equal to the total width divided by the number of rectangles, which is equal to 1. We now just have to find the values for x1, x2, x3, and x4. You can see here that x1 should be equal to 0 0.5. x2 will be equal to 1.5. x3 will be equal to 2.5 and x4 will be equal to 3.5. Sometimes it's just easier to write as a fraction, so this would be 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves, and 7 halves. All right, let's go ahead and find the areas now. Area total will be equal to the area of the first rectangle, which is delta x times y sub 1 plus delta x times y sub 2 plus delta x times y sub 3 plus delta x times y sub 4. And again, we can factor out the delta x here, so we can write that the total area will be equal to delta x, the width of each rectangle, they're all the same width, uh, multiplied times the sum of all the heights of all the four rectangles. Oop, that would be 3 here, plus y sub 4. Now, how do we find the height of each rectangle? We find them by plugging the x values into our equation right here which means that f evaluated at x equals 1 half is equal to 1 half squared plus 2. 1 half squared is 1 quarter. That would be 2 and a quarter. The function evaluated at 3 halves is equal to 3 over 2 squared plus 2. That would be 9 fourths plus 2. Hmm, 9 fourths plus 2. 9 over 4 plus 2, which is 8 over 4, that would be 17 over 4, and this can be written as 9 over 4. Sometimes it's just simply easier to write it as a fraction. The function evaluated at 5 over 2 is equal to 5 over 2 squared plus 2, that would be 25 over 4, 
plus 8, that, that would be equal to 33 over 4. And finally, the function evaluated at 7 over 2 is equal to 7 over 2 squared plus 2, which is equal to 49 over, over 4, plus 8, that would be 57 over 4. Quickly checking to make sure I did this correctly. 25 plus 8, 33, 49 plus 8, 57, 9 plus 8, 17, and 1 plus 8 is 9. Okay, that is correct. Now let's plug in the values to see what we get. The total area is equal to 1 times y1 is 9 over 4 plus 17 over 4 plus 33 over 4 and plus 57 over 4. Adding those together, that would be 90, that's 107, plus 9, that would be 116 divided by 4. 4 goes into 125 times, plus 4, that would be 29 times. So the total area, as approximated by this method, is 29. Now let's go ahead and use the integration again. We can say that the exact area is equal to the integral of the function of x times dx evaluated from the left limit to the right limit or the lower limit to the upper limit, which is from 0 to 4. That would be the integral of the function, which we said was x squared plus 2 times dx from 0 to 4. If we integrate this, again, remember, we add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. This is equal to x cubed over 3 plus... 2x to the first power over 1, evaluated from 0 to 4. Plug in the lower limits. You plug in 0 for x, you get 0, so we only need to plug in the upper limit. This is equal to uh, 4 cubed divided by 3 plus 2 times 4. 4 cubed is 64. That's 64 divided by 3 plus 8. 64 divided by 3, that's 21 and a third. That's equal to 21 and a third plus 8, which is equal to 29 and a third. Notice that is the exact area, and this is the approximated area. The approximate area is not a bad way to find the area. And so you can see that they're very close to one another. If you use this method where you pick the height of the rectangle to be the middle where the curve hits the, uh, where the uh, x value, when evaluated, when the function evaluated that x value hits the curve right there, if you make the rectangles that particular height, you have a much better approximation, which means you don't need nearly as many rectangles to get the exact value for the, um, for the area. But again, the definition of an integral is you keep adding more and more rectangles until the number goes to infinity, until the thickness, the delta x, goes to zero, and then you have the exact area, which is equal to the integral, and that re represents the area underneath the curve. That's how it's done.